you want the straight goods now? Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. that's still a little fluffy. <laughs> so um, in the program, because Phil didn't mention this, and I had to bring my family because my wife couldn't make it from San Francisco because she had to work. So my wife got me involved with volleyball. She really did. And you know, through all the interviews I've done, she'll go, hey, did you ever mention that I got you involved? I'm like, no, I kind of failed to <laughs> mention that. So I promised her I would, but she forced me to bring my family just to prove that. So just wanted to let you know. But one thing about my wife, she has kept me grounded over the years. You know, just a true partnership. And um, I, you know, I'm going to give you some stories to put kind of the real perspective on things. So in 2000, we won the Sydney uh, silver, silver medal. And then that year, we were living in Mississauga. I won the Disabled Athlete of the Year for the city of Mississauga. So it was great, great year. So the Mississauga News calls me up, wants to do an interview. All right, no problem. And so he's asking all these questions like a reporter does. And he says, what, uh, what does this you know, year mean to you as an athlete for everything you've done? And you know when you want to say something and it doesn't kind of come out that way? So instead of saying, you know, you see somebody say, hey, good luck, take care. You kind of go, good care, take luck. And you're like, oh. So what I wanted to say to the reporter was, it was like the icing on the cake, or it was the cherry on top. So I go, hey, you know, it, it's been like the cherry on the cake. And I went, oh. I, I go, um, are you, uh, he goes, no, no, I know exactly what you mean. I'm like, okay, good, 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 good. So a couple days go by, they're printing the, uh, the newspaper, I'm at work, and my wife calls me up. I'm like, hello, she's like, cherry on the cake, huh? And I'm like, oh. Couldn't believe that happened. So my my times of swagger and pride, there's a lot of ebb and flow with it. So that it just kind of goes without saying. The cool part about disabled volleyball is the teams that we've played over the years, all from different countries, all have different backgrounds. I mean, we all share the same passion for volleyball. But you got to think, like you know, we're playing guys who were you know survivors of landmine victims from Cambodia, survivors of the genocide from Rwanda. Um, even Israelis were you know, ex-war victims, they were war vets. And, and Lawrence and Larry, you guys know this, you know, in the 80s, Israel was like the team. They had a dynasty, but as, they, as we started getting better, they were kind of more in the sunset part of their volleyball career. And they had this great captain setter who, missing fingers, was the best setter I've ever seen in my life. His name was Haggai. And he came, he came up to me, he goes, because they were losing badly, and he's like, John, we need another good war. <laughs> okay. So it was a little humbling, you know, I lost my leg to cancer, we had, you know, motorcycle victims, congenital, all the, I got nothing to complain about. This guy was in like a tank and he had a motorcycle. Anyways, they need, they, need, they need another good war, so uh, good on them. So, I mean, but again, ebb and flow, all these great things, and, and Phil, thank you very much. Those were very kind words, and Lawrence and Larry and everybody. But I'm going to share with you just a couple of stories to sort of make it kind of more real. So we were in Germany for World Championships. And uh, you know, when you're in a foreign oh. country, you guys know you get, a, you get a translator. Well, that tournament, we got a 21-year-old blonde, beautiful translator that all the guys fell in love with. And we have a pre-meeting, and, and as you heard, we have nicknames for the guys. So she's trying to remember everyone's name or nickname. So she's going, okay, you're meat pie, you're giant, you're hamster. And then she looks at me, she goes, I don't remember your name, but you look a lot like Bruce Willis. And I'm like, that voice, hear that voice? It's Willis. So next day, we finished practice, and we're in the food hall. One of my teammates brought his grandmother, because she was from Germany, you know, to Germany for the tournament. And so we're at the table, the whole team, and she taps me on the shoulder, and she goes, um, you're a really good player. I said, oh, thanks, you know, I love to play, I love the game, love the teammates. She goes, do you know who you remind me of? And I'm like, oh, no. You know, I'm waiting for the big thing. She goes, you look like that figure skater. <laughs> and I go, oh my god, if she says Scott Hamilton, I'm going to punch her in the face. So there was a large popping sound of my bubble through the, the country of Germany when I found that out. So I just want to share with you, it's not all that great. But I do have to say, the highlight for me was winning the silver medal in, in Sydney. It was a long journey for all of us. You know, you're there, you're there for five weeks, you have no toenails left, it's all that good stuff. And, um, but I am gonna share with you one more story about Sydney that people don't know or hear about. So, if you've been to the Olympics and, or big events, you know, the, the opening ceremonies are the big thing, right? 100,000 people, you're all amped up, ready to go. Closing ceremonies, not so much. You're kind of tired, you're ready to go. So, we're at closing ceremonies, and you know, the athletes have to be there early. And what I did before we went to Sydney is I bought a big Frisbee. So, you know, a lot of downtime, you're playing Frisbee. And what I did before closing ceremonies is I had Everybody signed the Frisbee, and I put my name, I said, whoever catches this Frisbee, email me, because I was going to throw it out to the crowd, 
you know, yeah, as a souvenir. So we're, we're playing Frisbee, whatever, and then they're saying, look, athletes, get back to your seats. We have about 14 rows up, you know, all the countries around, and uh, we're getting ready, and Vincent Pichette is still there, and he's on the phone, he's like, JP, JP, send me the Frisbee. I'm like, no, 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 no. I said, the, the closing ceremonies, I want to keep it. He goes, no, no, send me the, throw me the Frisbee. And he was really emphatic. I'm like, oh, I don't know, and they're like, whatever. So the way the stadium worked, it was 14 rows, and then down in the last row, there's two railings, okay? So on the field, facing the stadium, off to the side of Vincent, about 15 yards, is a little person in crutches. You know, they aren't crutches. And he's sitting there like this, and he's got sunglasses, and he's just he's got a beard, I'll never forget this. And he's looking up, and Vincent's like, JP, just send me the Frisbee. So I stand up, and I throw the Frisbee. But I hung on to it about a half second too long. Then we kind of go in slow motion. So all of a sudden, it's like, no. And this Frisbee starts at Vincent, and starts kind of 